Good morning, my people, my people, my people. My name is Chief Strongblood, St. Vincent and the Grenadines' favorite and most hated son, the diaspora machismo. My people, today's topic is you are the father of... You. Your father is a murderer, and so are you. Your father is a murderer, and so are you. Oh, great supreme and sovereign father. As I come into your holy presence, to open your words, to speak to your people, to bring your people vital information about you, about your son, about your kingdom, about our sojourn on the earth and how to make it into your kingdom, Mosai. I ask that you will send the holy angels to engulf this place, put a hedge of protection around me while I speak, to prevent all who will try to use demonic and other forces to affect me. Mosai, let your Holy Spirit Put all the things you place upon my heart, upon my lips. Let your Holy Spirit, one of all who will try to use demonic and other forces to interfere with my thoughts, to interfere with my mind, to interfere with my memory. All who will try to use demonic and other forces to put words in my mouth that are not in my vocabulary or cause me to stumble over words I am familiar with. Most high. You are the only one who can do this. That is why. You are the only one I am requesting this from. In Yahushua's name, I say, let it be done. My people, let us turn our Bible to John chapter 8, verse 44. And this will be the basis under which we are going to discuss this morning's lessons. John chapter 8, verse 44 says, You are of your father the devil, and the loss of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he aborted not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks, he speaks a lie. For he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father thereof. My people, this is the words of the Son of God, Yahweh Shah, aka Jesus Christ. It is important to know who Yahweh was speaking to when he uttered his words in order to put it into context and to get a full understanding of what he was saying. We can only get a full understanding of what Yahweh was saying when we understand who he was speaking to. My people, Yahweh was speaking to the Jews in this text. For many, many years, we all thought that the Israelites and the Jews were one and the same. We all thought that the Israelites and the Jews were all white. Because the Caucasians were responsible for accumulating all of the history, hiding those history away. And thousands of years after, they told us what they want us to know to accomplish a particular objective. But the Son of the Most High, Yahweh says that when He leaves, when He, the physical embodiment of truth and of righteousness, He is going to send back to us the Spirit of Truth, who's going to bring us into all truth. My people, the Spirit of Truth have opened the eyes of the Israelites. And now we are aware that the Israelites are the fathers and the forefathers of the children of the transatlantic slave trade. That means the children of the transatlantic slave trade and their descendants are the direct descendants of the Israelites of the Bible. They are the direct descendants of Abraham. Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Samson, Elijah, Jeremiah, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We are the direct descendants of Yahweh. He is our big brother, my people. When Yahweh was speaking here, he was not speaking to the people. Of who's the community 
that he is a blood relative, but he was speaking to an alien to his community. My people, as I said a while ago, we all thought that the Jews were Israelites and they were all white. But in this series of studies, Series X, we discover that the Jews were white Romans while the Israelites were black. How did the Caucasians, who were an alien in a black community, get the authority to call themselves Jews and to administer the affairs of the temple? My people, in this stage of Earth's history, the Roman had conquered Israel as they had conquered most of the world. In this stage of Earth's history, Israel was a conquered foe. They had to comply with the instructions of the Romans because they were now their masters. My people, the Romans came up with a system of government that would help them to keep an eye on the Israelites without investing too much time and too much resources. What did they do? The Romans who were born in Israel, they were second and third generation Romans. The, the king of, of Israel, who was a Roman, start appointing second generation Romans to serve in the temple because if you remember closely all activities in Israel surrounded the temple why the words of the Mosai was their constitution and it was their law the words of the Mosai were housed in the temple and it was administered by those people who are who are assigned to take care of the temple the Levites So everything in Israel surrounded the temple. So if you want to keep an eye on the leadership of Israel, and you want to keep an eye on the Israelite community, keep an eye on the temple and all that goes on in the temple. So this is why the king of Rome appointed second and third generation Romans to, to be a part of the administration of the temple and give them the title of Jew. My people, in other words, the Jews were spies for Romans. For the Romans, you have to remember, Yahushua have proven since he was 12 years old that he, in, he understood the entire scripture. He understand more than the scriptures. My people, Yahushua knew that the Romans were the Edomites. He also knew that his father, Yahweh, hated Esau and he declared that he will hate the Edomites forever. He also knew exactly why his father hated the Edomites. My people, Yahusha also knew that Esau was placed in Rebekah's womb to forfeit the, plan, the plans of the Most High. He also knew that Lucifer, the devil, Satan, was the father of Esau. So when Yahweh was speaking here, he was speaking from a knowledge that is based on things that should have been outside of his scope of knowledge. But he knew it because he was the son of God. And he studied the scriptures even as a child. My people, When Yahweh was speaking here, he being a master of language because his father is the creator of all language. He spent an unnumbered period of time in his father's presence. 
my people. So when he say, you are of your father the devil, he was speaking about Lucifer and he was speaking about Esau. He said, the loss of your father you will do. If he left that day, it would have been too broad a statement. Too much speculation would have been have to made to understand what the love, of the loss of your father was. So what he did, he says, he was a murderer from the beginning and he abode not in the truth because there was no truth in him. When he speak a lie, he speak of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. So in the following lines, Yahweh should qualify what the loss of their father was. So what he was saying, you are just like your father the devil. And all of the things that your father did, you are willing to do it. My people don't forget the first loss of their father the devil is the thing of is the, is the loss of murder. Remember that when Lucifer caused one third of the hosts of heaven to follow him and to lose their righteousness and their perfection, he actually killed them. He actually killed them because they were no longer in their lofty estate. They were no longer perfect. They were no longer righteous. They were now defiled and hideous. He killed them. He's a murderer. He was responsible for killing one third of the angels of heaven. And a day is soon coming when he will secure the eternal death of these creatures where a memory of them will be wiped away from the entire existence. So he was a murderer and he is a liar. He kills and he lied to cover up the evil that he did. My people, I am going to prove to you that Yahweh when he speaks here was not only speaking about the devil, he was also speaking about Esau. Let us turn our Bibles to the book of Joshua, chapter 7, 27. And we're going to pick up the reading at verse 7. And we are going to read verse 7 and 9. Because there is where the meat of the issue is. But before I read that, I must let the ground work and paint a nice vivid picture for you as to what is happening in those passages that comes before the book of Joshua chapter 27 verse 7. Issa, sorry, when Abraham was born, Nimrod, who the Bible referred to as the mighty hunter, and leave it there, was king over the whole world. He was king of the world. Abraham was born. It is believed that when Adam and Eve sinned, when Adam and Eve sinned, the Most High came down and he made garments from the, from the skins of the animal. It was the first sacrifice. It was the first shedding of blood. And it's the first history of someone dying. Of something dying rather. My people, at the death of Adam and Eve, these garments were handed down from generation to generation. When Noah and his sons went into the ark, Noah was the custodian of these garments. And he took them in the ark with him so the garments were preserved. The last person to have had these garments was Nimrod's father who gifted them to Nimrod. It is believed that Nimrod became a mighty hunter for when he put on these garments that the Mosai made with his own hands, he got the skills 
the power and the temperament that is needed to do what he loved to do. It is also believed that Nimrod became a conqueror because of these garments. My people, at this stage of Nimrod's life, Nimrod would have been about 200 years old. 200 years old. An old man, a frail old man, not as strong as he was before, not as fast and skilled as he was before, but he had on the garment. My people, Nimrod had a habit of walking in the fields in the evening because he spent a lot of his youths in the field hunting and fighting battles. So he became one with the field. So now that he was an old man, he often go out in the fields. And while his men hunt, he was still a king, while Nimrod men hunt, Nimrod will walk about in the field. Issa was monitoring Nimrod for quite a while because he learned that the garment, the leather garment that Nimrod wore, gave him the strength and the power and the skill that is why he was Tom, the great hunter, the best hunter to ever live. So Issa start observing Nimrod. And one day, while Nimrod, mighty men were out hunting, Nimrod and two of his soldiers were walking in the field. Issa hid away. I don't know for how many days he was there hiding, but he hid away. And he was monitoring Nimrod. Let us read verse 7 to find out what happened now. And Nimrod and two of his men that were with him came to the place where they were. When Issa started suddenly from his lurking place, drew his sword and hastened and ran to Nimrod and cut off his head. Not only did he murder Nimrod, he also killed the two men that were with Nimrod, my people. Bear that in mind. We'll come back to this. Let's go down to nine. And when Issa saw the mighty men of Nimrod coming at a distance, he fled and thereby escaped. And he took the valuable garments of Nimrod, which Nimrod father gave to Nimrod, with which Nimrod prevailed over the whole world and he ran and he hid it he hid them in his house so here we see yesterday we learned we learned that some characteristics of Esau we learned some very important characteristics about Esau Right? We learn that Esau was a designing and deceitful man. And we learn yesterday that the word designing means one who will plan a crime, a deceit, or some wickedness and go all out to perform this wickedness. And we see here Esau wanted the garments of Nimrod. He planned it. He observed Nimrod's behavior. And when the time is right, he lay wait in the field, lurking. He attacked Nimrod and destroyed Nimrod. Kill Nimrod. Kill the two men that were responsible for taking care of Nimrod. He stole the, ex the valuable garment of Nimrod and he hid it away in his house. My people, let me tell you something. It is not an ordinary man. 
who will find it in him to attack to attack a king no ordinary man no ordinary man would want to attack a king especially a king that has bodyguards with him no ordinary man will want to do that my people the only kind of people person who will plan an attack on a king who will plan to murder a king and actually execute that is a man who is accustomed to murdering others Isa had a confidence that could only come from practice and practice and more practice my people it is not a bunny rabbit it is not a running fox it is not a sheep or a lamb these are men with weapons same weapons with you equal or even more skillful than you are for you to make up your mind it means that you would have had practice attacking and killing people and you will become so confident in your skills and in your ability that a thought like attacking a king and his bodyguards would not have phased you my people we must conclude that many innocent men would have died at the hands of Isa even as a 15 year old even before he attained the age of 15 they were unknown the murders of Isa were unknown but it doesn't mean that the most high did not know about it it doesn't mean that the holy spirit don't know about it and it doesn't mean that the holy spirit did not reveal to the son of the most high yahusha aka jesus christ about either isa's mothers see here we see isa's father was a murderer he destroyed one third of the heavenly host and very soon there even the memory of them will be this will be destroyed from the entire earth Like father, like son, Isa followed in the footsteps of his father, Lucifer, who destroyed one third of the angels. And he now had been killing men till he reached that stage of courage and confidence where he was able to go and kill King Nimrod, the mighty hunter, the great warrior. My people, don't forget that the Edomites, the Romans, the Caucasians in Jesus' time on several occasions tried to kill the Son of the Most High. They tried to induce, they tried to induce the community into killing him. So what they did, they put a ban on him and no man must ever so associate with him. They wanted him to be hatred, hated by all. And when they tried to induce the community to kill him, it didn't work. There was a particular time when they themselves decided that they were going to lay hands on the son of the Most High, Yahusha, and kill him themselves because they wanted him dead. Because they are of their father, the devil, and the loss of their father, the devil. My people, the Most High, snatch away his son out of the hands of the Jews so that they could not have killed him. My people, when he was just spoke, he knew what he was speaking about. Today, the attitude and behaviors of the Caucasians has not changed. They are like their father, the devil. My people, look at how they have treated the Israelites. Okay. Look at how they treated all the native people of every land. Destroy them. They murdered them wholesale. 
show them no sympathy. In the same way, Lucifer knew that his actions would be destroying all of those who were going to follow him. He led them into following him blindly knowing what would be their faith. He had no mercy for them. Esau, when he was killing all of these people, practicing, so he can kill, kill Nimrod, he showed no mercy to them and he showed no mercy to Nimrod. To Nimrod. My people, the Native Americans, the Caribs, the Aztecs, the Mayas, the Mayas, the Awads, the Aborigines in Australia, the Semis in Europe, you go to Africa continent, you go to the Asian continent, you go to the Indian and they destroy everyone. They practice murder among these people. They kill them wholesale. For like their father, the devil, who wanted the kingdom of the Mosai that didn't belong to him, he couldn't get it because he couldn't defeat the Mosai. Like their father, Issa, who wanted the garment that Nimrod wore, he killed him and he took it. They have been doing this for centuries, for thousands of years. They kill the Africans and they take the resources. They inflict them with AIDS and Ebola and monkeypox, things that they created in the zoo so that they can go in there as, 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 as humanitarians, take care of them and steal their resources. So they get them sick, kill them, so that they can go in and rescue them and steal their resources my people. Look at what they do to the African-Americans here. Look at what they do to them. Now they have re-enslaved them again in a slavery that they will never get away from. They are able to use demonic and other forces to inflict great pain, torment, and agony upon them. My people, you have learned the son of a devil is a devil. In the same way, the children of a god is our gods. My people, the Caucasians, are the seeds of Lucifer. They are devils. They practice in lies and deception. They lie to the American Indians. When the American Indians befriend them, they lie to them in their actions. And they treated them like friends. And like their father Esau, they scouted the American Indians, learned their habits, and then they destroy them, they murder them, they take the food and they leave them to starve. They give them blankets with smallpox to kill them off. In the same way, they plant Ebola, AIDS, monkeypox, COVID-19 and all of these things on the African continent so that they can destroy the, African con the people of the African continent and get their resources for themselves. My people, they intentionally spread COVID-19 and, and the various variances because they want to keep the world's population under their thumb, under their control. It had nothing to do about an escalating um, numbers of people. They want to keep them frightened and afraid and dependent on them for their lives so they, they will always be obedient and submissive to them. My people, when Yahweh spoke, he did not misspeak. He knew what he was saying. He is a master of language. And when he speaks, in the same way, like how he was telling the disciple in one story, he told the disciples, and the other members who are listening in the parable of the wheat and the tears that the children of the devil are with us already and they will be with us until the most high come back for his world and in the same breath he was explaining to them 
how they came into the world, how their father Lucifer planted one of his seeds in Rebecca's womb. So you see, Yahweh is a master of words. When he speaks, you have to analyze his words carefully. Because although he's saying something on the surface, there are many other messages that will be beneficial for you if you take the time to look at it in detail and understand what he's saying. My people, their father is a mother and so are they. They have proven it. Tomorrow, I'm going to tell you how the Caucasians how the Caucasians, how the Edomites colonize Europe. How they get to take over Europe. I'm going to bring you some information that are hidden in the deep part of the Roman Empire. No one but the historians, the Caucasians know, thought they write everything that they do. They keep a document of everything that they do. But even most of the Caucasians historians will not be able to tell you what I tell you. But they will um, try to bring one of their people to tell you this after I reveal it. Because they want you to continue to trust them. So they are revealing truths about themselves that are already out there. Truths if they were not already out there and was showing and was shown to people like me by the most high they would never reveal it but because the most high have already revealed it revealed them to people like me they start bringing them to board they want you to think that they're honest and they're not hiding anything that their four parents did because they want you to put the blame on their four parents and give them a buy so you can trust them thinking that they and their four parents are different, but a devil is a devil. It matters not what, it matters not where or which generation they were born. You trust them to your own perils. 50 years from now, you trust them at your own perils. But they won't be here 50 days from now. Oh, great Supreme Master of the Thank you for this opportunity to speak to your people. I hope that your people listen and understand. Where I have lent confusion, lend clarity, send the Holy Spirit most high, so that the Holy Spirit can lend clarity to them. Let them understand what I'm saying. And let them be wise. And apply what I am saying to their lives, so that they and their children, and their children, children, can avoid the pitfalls that the Edomites, the Caucasian, will set for them. You know, she name I say, let it be done. My people, my name is Chief Strongblood. Tomorrow, we are going to discuss how the Caucasians conquer and colonize Europe. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'm out.